Hey everyone, Chris here from AV Technology. I'm here with Hugo from Flux. Um, Hugo, I just wanted to have a chat, sit, just get a bit of a catch up on what's new in your world, um, what you've been showing and talking to people about at the Integrate Expo. So kick off there. Yeah, I mean, great to be here in Sydney. There's been a lot of demand for us to show. I mean, it's been the case actually for a lot of territories since the acquisition from Armin. And, uh, you know, granted the, the Aussies, can mm. I call you guys the Aussies? Yeah, yes. you can, yeah. you can. <laughs> <laughs> you, you probably shouldn't, but you would just Okay, did. we can kill this <laughs> later. Uh, but the Australian, you know, or, you know, deeply wanted us to, you know, come to the show and be you know, talking sure. about the immersive audio and immersive audio deployment. So, yeah, yeah it's... Uh, and we're actually coming in with two new releases, one on the SPAT revolution front and one on venue synthesis on Good. the JBL front. It's something we could talk about as well. Well, let's talk about it. Like, you've got, obviously, um, Flux is a very, very mature system. Yep. Platform. And then with Venue Synthesis, you've got a brand new software tool from JBL. Mm -hmm. Prediction tool that released at the beginning of the year, yep. So how do those two worlds crash, meld, synthesize, <laughs> well, make friends? Yeah, I, th I think we could say at the base that, you know, I mean, Flux comes from a software first, you know, uh, vision approach this is what we you know we live on mm -hmm. and so we bring this to the equation in 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 the company in armin uh from a, and not just from a product perspective even from a development framework the way that we you know develop product that we deliver product the product delivery yep. um and and why do i go about this is the you know granted you can manufacture the greatest art on the planet but ultimately the um, the interaction with our end user, the integration with system integrators are with those software tools, these sure. tool sets. And major investments have been happening. I mean, this huge amount mm. of work, you know, getting that venue uh, synthesis product out. Second update already this year. Mm. Mm. Um, and in that particular contest, we're talking here about really a tool set from actual design. So from prediction to these systems towards the actual deployment. Uh, another element in software that's actually kind of part of that suite now mm -hmm. is our audio analyzer. So Flux is kind of playing in three uh, main areas, audio processing. Yes. So plug-in processing, that's our yes. history, that's our legacy. Sure. Um, with multi-channel art, we could say, because already there in our plug-in uh, tools and our processing tools, we already already always add kind of support for eight channel, 16 channel, more recently up to 64 channel with single processing instances. Sure. Um, um, so yeah, multi-channel at art from a processing perspective, mm -hmm. multi-channel at art from an analysis perspective as yes. well, or Flux Analyzer, uh, you know, we enjoy a huge community globally, both for studio and, uh, okay. and real-time analysis. Um, and, uh, and yeah, obviously Spat Revolution, which has been, you know, this product extremely successful for us. And um, so now, you know, just talking about analysis and talking about, you know, about, about immersive audio processing, mm. you're kind of starting to see, you know, all the elements of the change from the prediction elements uh, on the JBL catalog is performance and mm. array calculation, which are other elements of the actual deployment in this case. And then you bring the immersive audio mm. tools, uh, not just from a actual live deployment perspective, but even tools from a content creation. And that's mm. another subject we could okay, talk about, sure. how important content creation mm. is in the whole equation. And last but not least, the analysis. As you're deploying mm. those systems, mm. you need the tool to actually you know, analyze what's going on, both from a mixing or from an actual venue acoustic perspective. So, Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so that's kind of the final piece the puzzle, the analysis. Final, we don't like to think it's final, <laughs> but it's an extra and it's sure. piece of the puddle. We're trying to yeah, close yeah. obviously the, the, the loop, loop, you know, yeah. from uh, you know from prediction to deployment. Yeah. So talk to me about where immersive is at from your perspective as the global perspective. Like in our part of the world at least, it still is seems like very niche, very specialized. Um, but where is it starting worldwide to be more of a bread and butter kind of, you know, expected um, piece when it comes to events or I guess other applications? Yeah, I mean, I think that you know, we could definitely talk about everything around team entertainment, anything around, you know, museum installation, these mm -hmm exhibit, art exhibits, there's mm -hmm. a big desire to elevate the art experience. To follow what's yeah. been happening on the visual side, um, 
you know, it does still remain niche mm -hmm. in some ways from, I think one of the perspective being the challenges with the actual workflow. How do we actually create content towards the system? Yep. Um, uh, you can deploy the yep. most beautiful sure. immersive audio system in an installation yep. if you're, you know, forgetting the... Yep. What are you going to plan it? Yeah, and who's going to create the yeah, content? Yeah. What are the tools, yeah. prov you know, being provided yeah, to do yeah. so? So you seem sound very passionate about that for somebody who's most known for providing, I guess, the environment rather than the content. What is your view? Uh, how do we make the generation of the content uh, more democratized? Yeah, well, more democratize it, or how can we provide a tool set to actually ensure that content creators can collaborate together? Content creation can deliver, and let's call it in an agnostic format, deliver a media, a medium, or, you know, uh, mm. audio files, sure. metadata sure. that can be rendered to a system without necessarily being involved with being on site for weeks and weeks of work. I use this as an example all the time where you, I'll use Cirque du Soleil, I'm from Montreal, Canada. I'll yeah. use Cirque du Soleil as an example, right? They've got that luxury of deploying a large team of people for a long period of time yeah. on a project to get to the end result. Sure. But as immersive is scaling right now, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. reality is just impossible. Mm -hmm. There's traveling realities, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, traveling, you know, then there's downtime, right? Mm -hmm. You've got to have your venue down for two weeks because there's mm -hmm. a bunch of creators down there. So mm -hmm. figuring out ways to be more efficient you know, from sure. in studio to in venue, scaling up. And that's been an element that we've been working quite a bit. And I would say that that is, even as a whole, I mean, I mean talk about flux and what we've been doing, but even as a whole, as an industry, you know, figuring out those ways to actually create, deliver, you know, deliver a medium that can be then rendered later. There is no complete end-to-end -end mechanism in place. There's no standardization as well. Sure. Um, we can get into the subject as well of, you know, I mean, how can you have all these tools integrate with each other, right? So what role does Flux, what role do you play in all of that? What, what role we play? We could talk about the uh, industry initiative called ADMOSC, which we actually started some years ago with another manufacturer. And mm. since then, actually, many manufacturers have actually implemented. Um, we're most probably going to go out with an official uh, public release uh, V1 of this ADMOSC um, um, proposed standard and ultimately what this is um, if you're you know if the, the audience is not familiar with ADM ADM is currently the uh, the way to distribute audio and metadata in um, in for example in Dolby environment right when you're actually sure. creating an audio or master audio file delivering an ADM file to sure. Netflix to that sure. to that cloud server to Apple. Sure. Um, so that is the kind of end-to-end -end solution, right? You can create mm -hmm. and then deliver a master file that will be re you know, rendered to the, the theater, rendered yep. to your headphones if you're actually you know, on a smartphone, for example. Sure. Um, and uh, so, but one of the thing with that particular you know, format is that there's not necessarily a mean to actually send that metadata, the information of the, let's call it the audio objects. We're talking about sure. object-based audio. Yep. The metadata to send that data between multiple tools. It's mm. not necessarily that mechanism. There's no standard way defined to actually do so. So gotcha. ADMOSC right. is something we've been working on actually to really you know, build an ecosystem mm. of tools. Mm. Um, you know? Okay. Digital audio workstation, controllers, recorders, renderers sure. that can actually interpret this data. They can actually, you know, read it and render sure. it. So. so the content creator can do that in any old Atmos mix room. Yep, potentially, yeah. And Indeed. then generate yep. these files. But I guess the, the, the sticking point is that often with these bespoke spaces, they don't adhere to anything like a theater setting, often they don't. Yep. So I so do you have like, like is that insoluble? It's just sort of like when you when you've got something really odd, you just actually have to get in there and mess around for a week. Or everything else can be done from an Atmos space. Yeah, I mean what is Atmos, I guess, is the question. Yeah. To me, Atmos, one of the Atmos is in a monitoring environment. Yes. Right? That's what it is ultimately when we're yeah. talking about these 514, 714. Sure. It's a monitoring environment. Yeah. That's not our consumer actually going to be, you know, 
listening to that. I mean, I don't know anyone. Do you have a 714 at home? I don't, anyway. And most consumer, most <laughs> consumer. set up a studio, but anyway. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but so the, the majority of consumers don't have yeah, these no, systems. They don't. The point is that there is a monitoring environment yeah. and then there is a rendering or a delivery, you know, reproduction element. Sure. And that is our work, you know, yes. that it would be important to actually work on that rendering or that yeah. reproduction to let's call it transpose yeah. the actual experience. Because let me, that's what it is. You're creating a soundscape. Sure. Um, and specific to these immersive spaces, obviously yes. we've got that reality that you're, you know, you can be maybe mixing from a, from an ideal sweet spot, let's call it, but the reality of these spaces, yet audience spread all over and sure. you may have some extra, you know, um, anchors, visual sure. anchors that you want to kind of add some special effects to. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's not as simple as just saying sure. that, you know, um, but the fact that you already, just for forgetting about even, you know, the Dolby Atmos environment, just the fact that there is no easy way to mm. create, mm. to actually deliver a mm. file to maybe another mm. collaborator, other collaborator. And there's a, right now it's kind of still clunky. It's still yes. very clunky in the way. You kind of have the original guy to come on site, which, yeah. is, which can be fine. Sure. It's art to scale. Extremely yes. art to scale. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and does not encourage the collaboration. Yeah, right? so, so. but this I would say, Kind of ADM OSC, it is an initiative, an yeah. initiative to have multiple tools from multiple manufacturers to actually speak to each other, have a common language yep. um, as far as object, object position. Anyway, we're, yep. we're kind of off another tangency, but I think sure. it's an important well, conversation yeah. as far as how immersive is, you know, scaling or not scaling. Or what are the challenges to yep. scaling? Yep. Um, you know, because you're right, all these systems are unique. You know, I'm working mm. right now, I was working not mm. long ago on a very complex museum project, like, yeah. yeah, it's not a simple conversation. It's That's not right. a simple That's conversation. Right. And you want to have conversations like at Integrate uh, this week, you want conversations with people about, I guess, putting meat in the bones of projects and not sort of like trying to convince them that immersive is too hard. Like, you know, I'm not saying that you're convincing them the opposite, obviously, but, but do you know what I mean? They're coming with the expectation that this is going to be super difficult. Yep. Um, so... But what are some, just to sign off, I guess, like what are some of the conversations you've had this, what are the characterization of some of the conversations you've had this week? And, you know, are we headed into a good place or are we still kind of just, you're still sowing the seeds as it were? <laughs> I guess it depends. There's no one maybe answer to this <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, That's yeah. a good question. Um, I think that, you know, what people are, are pleased to see mm -hmm. is the fact that, you know, for example, we were talking about venue synthesis. Well, now I can actually, you know, get into a, con a configuration with someone where, you know, on a prediction tool, we can look at the space, we can start to talk about the creative intentions and deploy a loudspeaker arrangement. Yep. And from there, Actually, we can very rapidly, thanks to this release that we just did with um, Venue Synthesis and Spat Revolution, we can move the loudspeaker arrangement to the rendering engine, to the processor, to Spat, that you can rapidly get that arrangement in place, mm. not necessarily for dedicated hardware, mm. but on a piece of software that you can deploy with a pair of headphones and actually start to create two words, that, that yep. actual system, right? Gotcha. Um, headphones or a you know smaller scale monitoring environment. Sure. So uh, I think people are a lot pleased by this mm. kind of seeing that yeah. there are ways to actually um, get working on projects without necessarily being in the venue. Yeah. Now, yes, yeah. there is always a desire potentially to go in the venue to validate the content and get the the, the, the creative check. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying that we should stop that, yep. but how can we be as prepared as possible when we reach the venue mm -hmm. to maximize, you know, the on time, the in venue time that we have, yeah. um, and obviously focus on elevating the audio production rather than just trying to put it together in you know very sure. little time, um, you know, which is always the case, and sure. often night shift as well, <laughs> yeah, which is not right. great after hours. <laughs> um, that's great, Hugo. Thank you. Um, we took a few twists and turns there, but I think it's, That's it's useful. <laughs> it's useful. Uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Yeah, um, yeah. For the, thanks for stopping yeah. by. And I having think. A chat. I think you know. I, we took a, a you know a few twists here and there, but I think part of the conversation is how Flux and mm -hmm. Armin now are you know looking you know uh, deeply at the content creation. Yeah. Now. I mean, yeah, we cannot say it enough. Content is king. Yeah. Um, and so it is and are the tools mm. that are provided. And that's, you mm. know, something that we're yeah. on right now, well, beyond the hardware, beyond the, yeah. you know. Somebody's got to take ownership of that piece and 
do something to push it. And if that's you guys, then awesome. Go for We're it. happy to be yeah. part of that anyway. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All for the democratization of the subject. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Thank you. All right. Cheers. Cheers.